Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about create remote threat. In this type of event, Sysmon tracks with event ID number eight. When a process opens another process, injects code, and then executes that code using the create remote threat API call. This is a technique that has been used for a very long time. And to be honest, it has been mitigated by every AV that I know out there actually detects this technique. So there's ample coverage for it. But given that we have been into environments where the client has actually disabled the AV on servers, I do believe that this would be one of those that it is on a case by case basis. I would not recommend it in any modern version of Windows 10, Windows 11, or any of the client versions of Windows, since they have Defender and more than likely you're going to have a third party AV product installed there. And if that product gets disabled or that product gets uninstalled, Defender then takes over and you're not actually able to uninstall Defender as you're able to do on servers. So this would be one of those events that I would actually recommend that we just set up in the case that we don't have an AV. But for those cases where we don't have an AV, let's take a look at the process for setting this up. So here I have a Windows 2019 server where I've created a Sysmon configuration file for the latest version of the scheme at the time of this recording. I'm using SHA-256. I created a rule group called Create Remote Threat, and I set up Create Remote Threat Exclude so I can capture all cases. And the main reason for this is that many processes inside of Windows actually uses this specific API call. It is a documented API call when we look inside of Windows documentation. Because of this, given that it's a valid API, many vendors out there actually use this for its intended purpose. Now, I'm going to be honest, uh, if we look at Sysmon Modular, there's not a lot of examples here. It's mostly excludes and then an ex include for all. And the main reason for this is that given how well it has been mitigated by most AVs and also given that a lot of stuff inside of Windows actually uses create remote threat, as we can see here in the examples that Olaf provides us in Sysmon Modular, the best approach is to actually create a baseline. Now I have applied this configuration in this machine. And if you look, there, uh, there are examples of this abuse for a very long time. In fact, this is a script that I wrote 13, 14 years ago, a interpreter script called uh, Multimeter Inject. And before that, it was Payload Inject. And before that, it had another name. So almost 15 years, I've written some type of payload injection using Create Remote Thread. So as we can see here, what I'm doing is for a given process PID, I'm opening that process. I'm allocating memory inside of that process, given the length of my payload that I want to inject. I allocate the memory. I write my code inside of that memory address. And then what I do is I just create a thread for that memory address. So we're going to have a source and a target when we're working with this type of event. So let's take a look right now at the events that we have collected in this host with that configuration. So in this PowerShell window, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be running get sysmon create thread event. As you can see, Windows and many applications are really creating quite a bit of noise here. Um, so let's take a look at the different fields that we have available to us. We have the source process GUID, the source process ID, and the image. We also has a target process good and a target process ID and target image. So we have one process opening another process, as I mentioned. In addition to that, we have the memory information and the module information for that process as to where is the start address where that payload was written. This is useful if we're doing memory forensics on the system and we want to track and carve out out of memory that specific payload. Also, we have the source user and the target user. As I mentioned before, this is one of those events that I highly recommend that you 
just simply go and build a baseline and go from that baseline. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just select my source image, my target image, and then with those two values, I should be a I should be covered for most of the use cases inside of Windows. I'm going to then do a unique. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe this into convert to Sysmon rule to turn all of this stuff into Sysmon rules that I can then use to exclude on my system. And I'm going to do set clipboard to save the information in my clipboard. Then I can just go into here into my baseline for the exclude. I can include this. Control A. And I'm going to do control shift P XML tools format XML. And I do need to create a capture for all of this. So what I'm going to do inside of my group here is I'm going to do another create remote thread event type. Here's my include. And I'm going to do Control I source image begins with see. I'm going to do another one. Source image. Typo here. Begin with, and I'm going to include in case it's sub remote tab. That way I can track both of those cases. I'm going to save this. What's going to happen is I'm going to capture any of the execution of a remote thread, and then I'm going to process my exclude as, and if it matches one of these, I'm actually going to exclude it out of my uh, capture. As you can see, it's a very simple one. So it's a simple one, as I mentioned. Uh, there's not much to it. And to be honest, I would not enable this on client machines with modern versions of AB products, given that this specific technique is very well mitigated. In fact, attackers have moved away from this technique to using other API calls to perform process injection. And now what we're seeing is that AV and modern EDR products are catching wind of all of this new API. So they're using some of them documented, others undocumented, and they have actually shifted to other methods like using syscalls or adding other techniques to then bypass those detections. So this is one that I have to be honest, I would not recommend that you use this unless you fit into that category where you have actually uninstalled and EAV from your servers. Again, I really hope that you liked the video. I hope that you found the information useful. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.